Hey, Kempner Band, this is Mr. Brott. Earlier this week, I emailed you about uh, the band starting up marching band rehearsals. So on the week of September 7th, we will begin marching band rehearsals in person at Kempner in, in our practice field in the back of the building uh, where the band practice field is in the student parking lot. So this email uh, or this video is to inform you guys of all the procedures, policies, and guidelines that we will be following uh, for all these rehearsals that we'll be having. So let me go to, let me show you. So our district has given us a lot of information to share with you. Um, and all of this information comes from uh, UIL guidelines, Fort Bend ISD guidelines, um, state guidelines, county guidelines, basically everything all combined in one. Um, so, and they put it all together and they call it the COVID mitigation and response. So marching band rehearsals. Uh, this is re this training that this is what I'm doing right now. This video is required training for all Kempner band students and parents. So if you're a band parent, if you're a student, you need to watch this video and hear all this information. Uh, rehearsals will begin the week of September 7th. We will cover the following information uh, in this training procedures, risk mitigation, instructional practices, COVID-19 symptoms, reporting procedures, and parent communication. All right, so some procedures. Uh, Drop-off and parking will take place in the student parking lot in the back. So when you pull up or you drive up to uh, drop off a student for rehearsal, uh, you need to take them all the way to the back in the student parking lot where our trailer is. Uh, and that's where that will take place. If you're, if you're a student who drives and you're parking, we have designated parking spaces back there uh, where you'll park. Students should be wearing a mask when, they, when they're exiting the vehicle. So as soon as you come out of the vehicle, you should have your mask on. Uh, students should have their instrument, equipment, and a water jug filled with ice water. Students will travel immediately to a dot on the field. And the dots are spaced seven and a half foot apart. Uh, staff will take temperatures at this time. Uh, students will have designated spots to rest on, uh, on the sideline during breaks that are six foot apart. And we'll show you that after we get every, everybody uh, on the field on a dot and we've done temperature checks and screened everybody, uh, we'll kind of explain where your spot is on the, when we take a break uh, on the sideline where you can go. And there'll be tape on the ground that'll show you, where, you know, how close you can be and, and that sort of thing. Uh, students will leave immediately after rehearsals and there will be no congregating. So as soon as we're done, as soon as we dismiss, students should go straight back into their car and leave. You can't stay and hang out and, you know, congregate with each other and socialize. Uh, risk mitigation. So face coverings. Everybody is required to wear uh, a face covering. All student staff will wear face coverings at all times. The only exception is while playing a wind instrument or when drinking water, uh, after which mask will be immediately put back on. So once, when you get out of the car, you have a mask on. When you're on the field, you have a mask on. If, if we're asking you to play your instrument, you can pull your mask down, you play, and then as soon as you're done playing, you'll put it back on. Um, so some guidelines about uh, putting on and taking off mask. Don't touch the mask while wearing it. Uh, wash your hands after removing it and regularly wash your mask. Mask fitting importance. A poor fitting mask has gaps on the side, the nose isn't covered, it's loose around the edges. Each of the above are poor fitting in their own right. A better fitting mask has no gaps on the sides, the nose is covered, and a fairly good fit around the edges. In fact, when you take your mask off, you should almost see an imprint of where the mask is on your face. A well-fitting mask has no gaps, nose covered, it's tied around the edges and should leave a, like I said, leave a mask outline uh, once removed. You will be sent home for not properly wearing a mask, okay? So if we see you standing on the field and your nose isn't covered or it's hanging loosely, um, we'll be taking you off the field and asking your parents to come pick you up. So. That's very important that, that students wear masks properly and that you have a mask that fits you and works for you properly. Social distancing. 
Students are required to be six foot at all times of non-activity. So basically during breaks or anytime we're going to the field or off the field, you have to be a minimum of six foot uh, distance away from each other. When we are playing, when we're doing any kind of activity on the field, students will be seven and a half feet uh, away from each other. So our dots on the field are seven and a half feet uh, separated uh, from dot to dot, which is a four step interval for marching band folks. Um, when we're inside, if we're having any kind of sectionals or anything inside, students will be required to be 10 foot uh, distance uh, away from each other, which gives them 100 square foot of space per person during activity. Activity is defined as playing, marching, singing, or engaging in any kind of breathing exercises. Non-activity is anything else when we're on breaks or that sort of thing. Uh, restrooms will not be accessible during these marching band rehearsals except in, the, in any kind of, if there's some kind of extreme emergency. So students need to take care of restrooms before rehearsal, and then, you know, there, it's only going to be two hours, so you can take care of that after rehearsal. Hygiene. Uh, washing your hands or using hand sanitizer when entering the building, exiting the building. Uh, throughout rehearsals, especially after touching shared surfaces or materials, and we will have hand sanitizing stations available to you on the sideline. So we'll have stations that will have hand sanitizer and that kind of thing, uh, and paper towels and stuff out there for you guys. Um, proper hygiene also includes no sharing of water bottles, absolutely not, or food, uh, no sharing of clothing, uh, any kind of musical accessories, reeds, valve oil, liars, etc. So if one trumpet player has a, a bottle of valve oil, they can't pass it to their buddy who also needs valve oil. You need to have your own. We're not allowed to share. Uh, musical instruments, there can be no sharing of musical instruments. And then we won't really be using lockers right now because we're just going to be outside. Okay, hygiene. Uh, we will have daily screenings for students and staff. Uh, before arrival, staff will complete a screening procedure on, the, they've actually, Fort Bend has created an app that we, we go into the app and we answer questions and it screens us uh, before we're allowed to enter campus. Uh, students before arrival will also complete the screening. They haven't, uh, we're hoping that they'll have, there's an app that they're creating for the students. It's not out yet. We think it'll be out before September 8th. If not, it'll be like a Google Doc that you'll have to fill out every single time we have a rehearsal. Upon arrival, all students and staff will have their temperature taken daily. So as soon, like I said earlier, as soon as you get to the field, you'll go to a dot and staff members will come around to each student with a, it's, it's a temperature taker that's done without touching you that we just like point it at your head and it takes your temperature. So all students and staff members will have their temperature taken daily. Um, and we will send students home if they answer yes to any of the screening questions or if they have a temperature of 100 degrees or, or greater. Other risk mitiga mitigation factors. Attendance records will be kept for contact tracing. So one really important thing that our COVID response team in Fort Bend ISD has is if anybody gets sick or anything like that, they need to know exactly who was at this rehearsal, what times the rehearsal started, uh, what other staff members and what student members. So we'll be taking attendance every single day uh, for what, and that's one of the big reasons. All directors will serve as safety monitors to ensure all safety protocols are followed. So myself, Mr. Duaneus, Mr. Guillaume, Mr. Perales, we will all constantly monitor that all these uh, procedures and guidelines and people wearing masks and social distancing at all times. Uh, you need to arrive in appropriate attire daily. That means you have your white t-shirt on for rehearsals. Uh, you have t proper tennis shoes to be on the field. You know, that kind of, we just wear your, your normal marching band stuff and your face mask. Students and staff must stay hydrated. You must bring a jug of water daily uh, filled with ice water. So when you show up, your jug should already be filled with ice water. We will not have water available to you. We will not be able to send students in to get ice and ice water and bring out on our cart like we normally do. Uh, so you have to provide that uh, for yourself when you show up. And then to the greatest extent possible, we will keep students in cohorts, which, and that's one of the reasons why we're doing woodwinds and brass on separate days and color guard and percussion on separate days. 
Uh, and also while you're at uh, the school or at our rehearsal, you'll mostly be uh, in the same group of people uh, from the beginning of rehearsal to the end of rehearsal. So, so when you're on your dot on the field, you'll, you'll be by sections that really won't mix together at any time. Um, instructional practices um, for marching band. We'll be practicing outdoors pretty much all the time, except in, you know, maybe a few exceptions where like maybe the baseline might go indoors and work on base splits or something like that. But for 99% of the time, we're going to be outdoors. Uh, no, we, we're not even allowed to have full band practices indoors, only small groups or sectionals. If, it, if rain is forecast at 30% or higher, or, or higher uh, we will cancel practice at least an hour before rehearsal begins. So we'll, you know, we always watch the weather uh, real closely, but if we see a 30% chance, we won't even have rehearsal. Um, we'll, be, we'll, we'll be checking pre-participation pre-participation medical history questionnaire for all students. And then um, new students are required to get a physical. So I, that was on the email I sent out. And uh, it, we, we sent out information about that uh, way back in March. But students who are freshmen or new to the Kepner Band have to have a physical, a UIL physical before they're allowed to participate. So please take care of that. Uh, when indoors, uh, chairs will be placed 10 foot apart. Uh, every student will have their own stand. We'll limit playing time indoors to, at least to a minimum of 30 minutes, or a maximum of 30 minutes, and then allow the room to sit for at least 60 minutes before we had like another group of kids come into that space. Uh, empty spit valves on a doggy pad. So we'll have pads. So for brass players, when we're inside, you'll have, you can't just empty your spit valve on the floor. It would go on a doggy pad. Um, when you're outside and you empty a spit valve, you need to put your, take your instrument and bring it low to the ground and then empty the spit valve. Uh, woodwind players need to clean and swab their instruments at home. Uh, we'll disinfect indoor surfaces, chairs, stands, percussion instruments every time that they're used. Uh, and then once again, do not share instruments, water, lockers, clothes, accessories, nothing should, you know, no item should ever go from one student to another student. Uh, at school during our rehearsals. Uh, band PPE. So you got to wear your face mask at all times. The face shields, the like plastic shields that kind of come down over your face are also highly recommended. Uh, not required, but recommended if you have one. Um, and then you can consider specialized PPE stuff. So they make uh, woodwinds, they make instrument bags that you can buy and put on their flutes. Uh, it's recommended that you guys use face shields, brass, they make bell covers that you can put on your bell. Um, these aren't required items, but you should definitely consider using them if you, if you can get access to them. Um, and then when inside, or we'll, we'll open doors and windows when possible to allow fresh air into a room. Band parents, uh, expectations for band parents. There will be no visitors inside the building at this time. Um, and then band parents, when you drop your kids off, uh, you need to stay inside the car when you're dropping them off or picking them up. You're not allowed to get out and come stand on the sideline and watch or anything like that. But you, you can watch from in your car if you park over there. Uh, but but we, we ask that you stay in your cars to eliminate, you know, any kind of exposure to anybody. Um, and then parents are not allowed to serve food, water or snacks during our rehearsals. Uh, the FBISD COVID-19 management plan. So identifying possible COVID cases. Students who show COVID-19 symptoms will be separated and isolated until their parents show up. So if somebody shows up, we take their temperature and it's 100 degrees or more, we'll immediately isolate those students, move them uh, very far away from everybody else and contact their parents to come pick them up. Um, We'll close off affected areas or close off areas used by sick individuals until disinfected. Uh, the area will be a disinfected area and we'll wait 24 hours before we use that area again. Any student feeling feverish will be given an immediate temperature check to determine if the student is symptomatic. Individuals with confirmed or suspected or exposed, students and staff must stay home through the infection period if a lab has confirmed that you have COVID-19 
or you experience symptoms of COVID-19. Re-entry to campus is only allowed when all three criteria have been met. At least 24 hours have passed since the resolution of fever without the use of medication. So you can't say, oh, I'll take a few Tylenol, oh, I don't have a fever now. You have to have at least 24 hours have passed since you, you haven't had a fever without you know, using Tylenol or ibuprofen. Um, second criteria, improvement in symptoms. Uh, for example, coughing, shortness of breath. Uh, and number three, at least 10 days have passed since the onset of the first symptoms. Someone suspected of COVID but not lab confirmed may not return to campus unless they have met all three criteria above. COVID diagnosis. So somebody has gotten a test and they know they have COVID-19. They must receive clearance from a physician before they are allowed to return. Close contact with lab confer, uh, confirmed COVID cases. Students or staff with close contact must stay home for 14 days. After 14, day, 14 days, individuals with no symptoms may return to campus. Individuals experience COVID, COVID symptoms must meet the three criteria on the previous slide prior to returning to campus. So what is close contact? Close contact is defined, and this is by our health department defines this for us, being directly exposed to infectious secretions. For example, being sneezed on, being coughed on, etc. cetera. Um, close contact is also being within six foot for a cumulative duration of 15 minutes. Mitigating factors include masks worn by one or both, ventilation, room dividers, etc. cetera. Um, if either A or B occurs two days prior to or up to 10 days prior to 10 days after symptoms onset, uh, which is the 12 day window. In the case of asymptomatic uh, case, two days prior to or up to 10 days after confirming lab test. So that, that's a mouthful. There's a lot there to kind of think about and look at, but you know, pause it, read that real carefully and think about exactly what that's saying there. So what are COVID-19 symptoms? Uh, feeling feverish or having your temperature taken and having a, a temperature of 100 degrees or higher. Loss of taste or smell. Cough. Difficulty breathing. Shortness of breath. Headache. Chills. Sore throat. Congestion and runny nose. Shaking or exaggerated shivering. Significant muscle pain or ache. Diarrhea and nausea and vomiting. Uh, screening criteria. These questions will be on the screening app or the form that students will fill out each day. Uh, known close contact with a person who is lab confirmed to have COVID-19 in the last 14 days. So you'll be asked, have you had close contact with somebody like that? Um, and have you recently traveled to a restricted area that is under a level three travel advisory according to the U.S. State uh, Department? Reporting procedures. So when we report, uh, COVID-19 symptoms on screening questionnaire, which persists more than 24 hours. So if, if somebody, you know, says on that questionnaire that they have been coughing or whatever, if it, if it persists for at least 24 hours or more, then that person is, uh, we report their case to the COVID management team in Fort Bend ISD. Uh, if you're living with a family member in the same household who is lab confirmed to have COVID-19. Uh, lab confirmed to have COVID-19. If you've been taking a test and you've found that you have COVID-19. Uh, close contact with someone lab confirmed to have COVID-19. So we defined what close contact meant earlier. This is how we report. Students and staff self-report on the screening questionnaire. So when you fill out that questionnaire and if any of those answers uh, alert anything, it immediately will go to the COVID-19 response team. Um, staff engages in confidential contact tracing to determine if other students were exposed by being in close contact. Uh, the staff will report to campus administration and our fine arts coordinator, whose name is uh, Jim Drew, the student and any exposed peers. Jim Drew and the campus administration will report to the COVID-19 management team who investigates and make any necessary notification to parents, students, county, etc. So one of the concerns in all this is that you have, uh, you know, we have HIPAA laws and you have protected health information. 
all information gathered through the screen, screening questionnaire, taking students temperature or student self reporting is protected health information and must remain confidential. If a student is sent home, we cannot share this information with other students, parents or campus staff. We may share this information only with students, parents, uh, their guardians, other staff members and designated campus department COVID-19 uh, point of contact. So that's a lot of information um, and I'm sure you have some questions or, any, or you know some things that you might think of that we didn't cover. Uh, so if you do, please email me. My, my email is on here, paul.brot at fortbendisd.com. And uh, like I said, uh, make sure that anybody, you know, band students, band parents, everybody involved, please watch this video. You know, feel free to pause and, and read through some of those slides and check out everything that we have on there. It's a lot of information, um, but we will be following all these guidelines very, very strictly uh, for all of our rehearsals coming up. So, and it's important that Kempner Band uh, parents and students are aware of all this information so we can follow everything uh, and keep everybody really safe. So, all right, guys. Have a great day, everybody.